are taking a look at what's making the news with the former editor for The Daily Star, Dawn Newsom, and former advisor to Boris Johnson, Oscar Reddrop. Um, and Dawn, we're going to start with this plot news. We've got Kemi Badnock coming on the programme in a matter of minutes. Oh, she, of brilliant. course, is a party favourite um, to take over at some point. Um, she won't want to talk about uh, these plots and twists and turns, but unfortunately, um, they don't always get to choose the narrative, Dawn, because there's a lot of talk about trying to oust the Prime Minister. Evidently, the right of the party, the centre of the party and the left of the party are not happy with Rishi Sunak. Um, he has been portrayed over the weekend and in today's papers as indecisive. Lots of things went against him last week. The racism row, um, Lee Anderson leaving. In his defence, he keeps going, stick with me, um, the cost of living crisis improving, inflation's coming down, um, but that is seemingly all he has to offer. So the latest plot is to install Penny Morden as the new leader of the Conservative Party. The question is, do we need another leader? I mean, what are the general public going to make of that? It's, I don't think any of us can cope with them. We've got the stomach for it. And will it make a blind bit of difference to how uh, the Conservatives fare in the general election? Oscar, you were at number 10 in the dying days of Boris Johnson's premiership. Does this remind you <laughs> Thanks of for those reminding days? Me. <laughs> well, um, no, it was a, it was a yeah. pivotal moment in the party's history. Yeah. It was fairly brutal. It was brutal, um, yeah. And everybody's turning their back on, on Rishi Sunak, it seems. Is it fair or is the party ungovernable? Has he let them down? Uh, well, I remember at that point in time, Boris, I think, felt that he'd won such a huge majority amongst people who never voted for the Tories ever in their lifetime, generations, and that if he is, you know, deemed not fit enough or not uh, Prime Minister of the UK, it should be the people that make that decision. Not quite sure Rishi has the same stake in the game on that front, um, but it is completely brutal. Um, I have a great deal of empathy and sympathy for people at number 10 at this moment in time because that building at this moment in time will feel like a bit of a submarine, really. And the, I guess you just hope that there is a periscope, if you like, where they can kind of see the concerns of normal people, really cut through, get down to their issues and create time and space. But th that building, I when you just don't know there's a tax coming from all sorts of in your own party, of course, the public, the Labour Party, it, it can be totally overwhelming and you forget mm. those issues of the day. Uh, and we've, there's lots of talk about Penny Mordaunt being what's described, Dawn, as a, as a stalking horse, mm. which is to say she didn't necessarily put herself forward. She's being put forward by a particular wing of the party, yes. actually with the hope to replace her with yep. something else later on. Yeah, and, and those who are supporting Penny Morden say that this is coming from her enemies, not her friends. She's not interested. She's happy enough doing the job she's doing, which everyone seems to agree she does a, a fairly good job on. But if it's not Penny Morden, who is it going to be? I mean, uh, you've, you have Kemi Badnock coming on. I mean, Kemi is also a red-hot favourite to take over. Um, you've got Grant Shapps. I mean, there's, there does seem to be a, a, a queue of them uh, who are willing to take on what I would actually view as one of the worst jobs in the country yeah. at the moment, to be honest with you. It's interesting, cos, I mean, obviously, as a former special adviser, Oscar, what would you be saying to Kemi before she does her round this morning? Because Oof, she yeah. won't want to talk about this. But yeah. she was the one who made number 10 look flat-footed last week when she came out and called mm. um, yeah. Hester's comments racist mm. when Rishi Sunak simply couldn't. Yeah, and she'll know that. Um, and that was... Uh, well, one, I think it was the right thing to do. She said the right thing. Um, uh, I think it was slightly in, in unexplainable why it took so long for people to be able to look in a, the face of a TV camera and call it out. Ten um, million quid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 well, maybe that was What's right. happened to that ten million quid? All the talk about that's gone away. Uh, I imagine the boring reality is that they've probably already spent it. Uh -huh. you know, political parties Let's run ask very Kemi tight. In a minute. Very tight margins. Mm. Kemi's a very skilled communicator. Um, I think she'll want to look like uh, she is completely uh, along with uh, along for the ride of Rishi Sunak. Um, she's got a good record. She has supporters, and uh, you know, in terms of so, future uh, leadership, you will not her... get anything out of her on that. Um, talking of, you know, echoes of Boris Johnson, mm. the Michael Gove factor in all this, is he or isn't he behind Kemi Badnock? <laughs> because that seems to be... He's a bit of a kingmaker, isn't he? He's a big or fan, not. I think. He's a big, a big fan, fan. Yeah. you think, or you know? Oh, uh, well, you, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, most, most people... I'm like anyone else these days. You know, No-one has any idea yeah. what's true or what's not, but th that, that, th there's definitely a bond there, for sure. OK, okay let's uh, talk about other things and... Um,
Pensioners come in, uh, Oscar. Liberal Democrat leader Sir Ed Davey, uh, their conference was at the weekend. He called on activists to knock on five million doors to bring the blue wall tumbling. What chances he got with that? Or is that a tie-up with the Labour Party? Uh, I think this is symptomatic of where the government are and where the Tories are at. They're getting reined in on from all sides. And I think this is another example. I think the Lib Dems will look to peel off, you know, the blue wall uh, elderly voters who felt left out by the, the recent budget. And then you've probably got reform looking at the elderly uh, voters who prioritise things like immigration. Uh, and you can just see even with, within one demographic there just how the Tories are, are, are really trying to scrape through and losing and losing more and more people and having to deal with pressure from all different angles. Um, I think the Lib Dems have had a very quiet uh, few months. Uh, I think partly because reform have taken over a lot of the, the space in terms of threats to the Conservative Party. But I, I really don't think the Tories can take their eye off them at all, particularly on issues. Um, I think what was very interesting about sorry. the Lib Dem conference at the weekend was Ed Davey was on stage, you know, um, being quite a, a stand-up comedy act almost, taking <laughs> the mickey out of Rishi Sunak, but actually was, didn't say anything about Keir Starmer, mm. which makes you mm. wonder whether there is going to be some sort of pact between... They've both denied it, obviously, but some sort of pact between those two parties. Yeah. Well, worth reiterating our invitation to the Lib Dems to come on any time to talk to us. They're not always that keen, but we, uh, we open that invitation always to you. Um, whilst we've got you, Dawn, let's talk about what's going on uh, in synagogues during Ramadan. And this is all in a bid to try and calm down escalating tensions. I love this story, Isabel. It's in The mm. Times. And it's um, this what it goes in on the Alith Synagogue, I think, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in northwest London, where Rabbi Hannah Kingston and the local Iman um, Sabah Ahmedi uh, get together and they do they do a sort of like at the end of the day of fasting for Muslims they they have a, a, a meal and the synagogue are hosting that so it's getting the local Jewish and the local Muslim communities together to share this meal and to discuss their differences but also to discuss what brings them together and it's just a really nice story about how you know we're all human beings at the end of the day and it's mm -hmm. it's just a, it's just a positive thing in so much hatred and we've seen yeah, well okay if I just play devil's advocate the ones they're going to sit down and break bread with are not the ones who are firing petrol bombs no, through the windows of course they're not, Eamon, but things. it's a start. Mm. That's all we can do, isn't it? It's a start. And it's not just a synagogue. There's a synagogue in Birmingham as well. I mean, the one in North West London has been doing it for 10 years, to be fair, but it just takes on more poignancy at the moment. Um, but it's like... It, it's, it's sharing that meal together. And food for thought. You know, it might inspire others and yes, they not sit well. down together, but it might make them think about things. Um, we're going to take a little pause in the paper review because we do have Kemi Badnock coming our way shortly. Uh, we'll see you in just a few minutes. You won't want to miss it.